have just entered the casual conversations of the Uneducated Education Talk Show. I'm your host, Jay. Thank you, E-Revolution. We'll talk about lots of things, so join the conversation. Welcome back to another episode of the Uneducated Education Talk Show, UE for short. I'm your host, Jay. Yes, just Jay. Occasionally, I will have a panel of special guests. Today is one of those occasions. We have joining us Francine. Hello. We have Jobby. What up, what up? <laughs> and we have Miss Queen down there. Hey. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> For today, we are going to be talking about friendships. But before I get into friendships, I got a little something I want to tell y'all, okay? I just want to paint a picture for y'all. Not so much y'all, but really, you know what I'm saying, the people out there in the world. So imagine you are online shopping, right? You're like, oh, I need some new shoes. I need, you know, microwave, whatever it is that you need. You just shopping. You put everything you need in your cart, right? Then when you get ready to check out, <laughs> it says that the value is zero but you didn't pay any money, right? That would be awesome. Can you imagine that? Mm-hmm. Like just getting all your stuff for free. Okay, well, see, I, I feel like I got a similar thing going on here because all of the entertainment and the gems that we drop in here, that's everything that you just put in your cart. That's and to true. check out, all you got to do is hit the subscribe button. So go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Right? I like it. I like your angle. Yeah. You see, you know, I don't like think she's going with it. <laughs> I mean, I would subscribe if, if I hadn't already. I would be pushing the button. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So with that out the way, let's go ahead and get into it. I got a couple questions for y'all as usual, right? Today's topic is friendships. But for everybody, I'm wondering, before you can get to the level of a friendship, do we have associates? <laughs> most, most definitely. Okay, so so explain. Go, Javi, as the only man on the panel today, we're going we gonna to let you uh, kick it off. So you said most definitely. What does that mean? What is an associate to you? Before we get into associates, let's take it one step lower. Okay. And yeah, I think uh, acquaintances are, is, is even less than associates uh, uh, because you can run across someone in, in the store or occasionally here and there and recognize one another may even know the, the name uh, so that's somebody you would call maybe an acquaintance um, and associate mm -hmm. I think is a little bit more uh, you, you you are more engaged with the, the, the individual uh, but maybe an associate not. is someone that I think that you know you do recognize the person as someone that you know and someone that you will have a conversation with uh, maybe not on an intimate level but you will have a conversation with but an acquaintance I believe you will not that's just my opinion. I appreciate you breaking that down a little further because I recognize that, but that never even came to my mind. So mm -hmm. I, I appreciate you bringing that to the people. Francine, Queen, what y'all got? Um, I agree. I think there's different levels of friendship, and I think that there are also friends for different reasons. I don't know if you'll cover that, but yeah, you 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 see, you you trying to get it over the head? Okay, okay, okay. Ain't there yet? Okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. I do think that there are different stages and different levels of friendships. Absolutely. Okay. So basically what we're saying is Javi pretty much knocked it out the park. We he 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 did it that question, right? We good, we good, we mm -hmm. good. I think I think he done gave the people out there a really good understanding. The takeaway with that question is we need people to understand. We need them to understand that there are levels to this. That's where I'm going. There's levels to this. Okay. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to move on to the next question. Now, when do you consider someone a friend? Is it, is it based on a certain time frame? Is it a certain amount of time or things shared? What constitutes someone being able to be called a friend? I think you have to define friend first because everybody's definitely a friend or what you're looking for in a friend is different from person to person. So in order to say that somebody considers a friend, we have to define what friend is. Is that, so I guess my question would be, is that somebody you can kick it everywhere? Is that someone who's always there for you? 
We got to define that first before we answer that question. I mean, well, since you brought it up, I mean, the, define a friend. Because here's the thing. There's going to touch on to a question that I'm going to ask before I ask it, just because everything kind of intertwines. So it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll let you know if you like getting too far ahead. But if you feel like you need to break down something to be to further explain your point of view, then go ahead and do that. Okay. Well, I think my definition of a friend is an actual friend, someone I can depend on. Um, someone who understands give and take within our relationship. Give and take, okay. Um, someone without judgment, someone who's gonna be real with me. Cause I can't, I can't call you friend if you can't be 100, 100% honest with me. Someone who can understand, the, who can understand me and when I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong and when I'm right, have my back. Mm -hmm. I think that's my definition of friend. Okay. okay, I mean, uh, well, first, let's look at what the dictionary says. And yep. uh, it says, um, <laughs> a person whom one knows and with, one, with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically exclusive of sexual or family relations. Family relations. So basically, someone that's not family is someone that you're not having sex with. And you actually have a bond of mutual affection. So I think that's exactly what you should say. See, I, I, I was going to bring up like Webster's definition of friend, but I didn't only because I agree with that definition on a, on a, a surface level. Because I think that, like we said, there's different types of friendships. And I think that you can be friends with someone you're in a sexual relationship with. Um, and, and some of my, a few of my best friends are family. So I mean, we, and we don't have to agree. That's, that's what this platform is for. When we do not have to agree, I want to bring everybody's different point of view to the table because we're going to enlighten some folks, whether we agree or not, we are definitely going to enlighten some folks. I don't think well, the definition well, is saying that you can't, that family members and people that you're right. involved with romantically can't be friends. Right. It's just that you're right on a topical, on a surface level, that's the, the plain old definition of a friend. But yeah, right. you can certainly have, you know, your exes can be your friends. True. Um, your family members can be your friends. I, I, I get the, the definition, but it is a very surface level True. Uh, definition. Yeah. I mean, Go, go ahead, Javi. Well, basically, uh, the like she said, surface of topical level of friendship, the basis of friendship is that there's a mutual affection. There's a mutual affection or a kin from one person to, to an another, and that's mm -hmm. what forms the basis of the friendship, whether they are family members or even session. Absolutely. Uh, okay. But, you know, if you take the, the family members out of the question and you take the... Um, uh, the sexual relations out of the questions when it all come down to it, no matter what, across all uh, forms of what we want to title this, the friendship is, there's a, a basis of mutual affection for one another. Okay. Well, um, Javi definitely came to join the conversation today, okay? <laughs> I appreciate you for that. So we're going to go ahead and move on. The next question. Y'all already touched on it, so we're just going to dive a little bit deeper. But are there different types of friendships or does it have to be an all or nothing? So you kind of already answered and gave your point of view, but let's go ahead and dive into it a little deeper. So Francine, you want to start? Um, I definitely think there are different types of friendships. Um, I've had friends from middle school and I've had new friends. Um, I was a little, someone approached me recently at the gym, someone that I exercise with, a woman. And she, okay. after several exercise classes, um, she said, you know, we should hang out sometime. And I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, I already have plenty of friends. Uh, mm -hmm. I hang out with my family a lot, and my family is considered friends. Right. So that just, it threw me a little bit, why, why she would want to be my friend. You know, we're in our 40s. Um, and I have, I have plenty no new friends. of friends. <laughs> I have, like, no, yeah, no new friends. Um, but this this person ended up being a really good friend to me. I just needed to give it a chance and embrace her. So she is my newest friend and she's been my friend for almost two or three years, two years. But um, 
she's a genuine person. So in concept of time, like you're saying, you know, you might need some time to see if that person develops into a, whether an associate, acquaintance, or a out, out and out friend. Um, I do think that there is a, a time frame in there, but sometimes you meet people and you're just instantly, you have an instant mutual connection and you become friends and you just hit it off and that can happen with male and female. Um, you just, your, your vibes, you know, connect, your energy connects and they end up being a really good friend. Um, or your vibes don't really connect, but you're maybe forced to be around each other because maybe that person is a friend of a friend and they just Mm -hmm. remain your acquaintance or your associate. Okay. So I believe that there are different types of friends. And I think that it's up to each individual to categorize where that person fits into their life and, and where to put that person. Yes. Yes. Queen, you got something? I, I have to agree. I mean, since I was little, I've always been taught and trust me, I tried to think the, the wrong way. So I've tried to make everybody fit in the same category as just friend and call everybody friend. And that blows up in people's face. That blew up in my face. So there are phases and there are friends for different things. I have friends that I go hang out with, maybe out to club or whatever. I have friends that I go to church with. I have friends, you know, for different things because some mm-hmm. people are not in that mindset or in that place or in that same maturity level to be in multiple uh be friends for multiple things. Yeah. And so I had to learn that the hard way, but I, I did learn that. <laughs> Listen, but I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because, <clears throat> you know, you, you have, and, and if you don't mind, you, as far as age, are a lot younger than the rest of us on the panel. And I'm, and I'm glad that you brought that up because where we might be a little bit more seasoned and experienced and, you know, maybe we've learned um, so we know automatically, no, we don't have, you don't have to be my friend for everything, or you have different types of friends. If there's anybody watching that went through what you went through, I'm glad that you brought that up because it doesn't mean that anything's wrong with you. It doesn't mean you did something wrong. And, it, and it's a very genuine spirit to want everybody to be your friend or to want to be friends with everybody. Just a lot of times that's not the reality. And once you've been burned a couple of times, you kind of realize that, oh, I need to put people in their place. And there's nothing wrong with that. So that's that was one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this topic. So I appreciate your point of view and bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. Um, just to sum up what you guys said, I absolutely feel the same way. Um, there are friends for different types of things. And I tell people this all the time. If we hang out and you're fun, but you're not the serious type, it's okay for you to, it doesn't mean we, we're not friends. It doesn't mean we're just associates. You can be my friend, but we just friends that kick it. We just have fun. We don't, we don't talk about stuff on a personal level, or you might just be a person that's not good with feelings. So why, if I'm feeling some kind of way, do I want to bring it to you? Because you're not going to be able to empathize with me, or you're not going to give me that shoulder that I need. So, but you're still my friend, you know? So you, you do have to put people in their place. One reason so that they don't you don't disappoint yourself wanting something for them that they're not able to give. So sometimes we hurt our own feelings when we want something from someone that they're not capable of giving. Like it's, that's not fair. Just wanted to touch on that. Okay. Uh, from basically, uh, from, you know, joining the military at a young age of, of 20 years old, starting off from basic training, uh, going to all these different um, duty stations, one thing I learned is that, you know, with social media, uh, is that you're going to run across a lot of people. Okay. You know, you're going to have some type of conversation or relationship uh, with lots of people over the course of, mm-hmm. say, a military career. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I've done is I've learned is that uh, the people that you confided with and you went through the same struggle with when you were in basic training were there for that reason and they were good friends for that reason. Okay. However, as uh, you moved on, you have friends that you, you know, those people that you confided in and you had that what we call a mutual action because you went through the same hardships together. You mm-hmm. formed that bond um, and, and you struggled together. Uh, they were my friends for that moment. Now, there might be a few gems out of that friendship that I took along for the rest of my life and maintained friendship with. Uh, mm-hmm. But there are lots of people that I've 
disclose my deepest, darkest secrets, you know, of course, throughout the course of my military career. And um, that I do not consider friends or acquaintances now. And it was no bad blood, no, no bridges that's been burned or anything like that. It's just that during that time, for that moment, that connection, it built something. It, it was something that was great, and it was something that um, allowed me to get through whatever I was going through uh, for, that, for that time or that moment. And then once I, I go on and moved on, I was able to uh, make new friends and meet, meet new people and have other people fill certain roles within uh, my world. Um, just like, you know, you were saying earlier is that uh, not everyone is, is, is for you. You know, this person is for everybody. Like they say, she's for everybody or he's for everybody. Javi Max is not for everybody. You know what I I'm heard saying? That and, I, and that's how I look at it. <laughs> how I look at it is that over the course of your life, you're going to run across a lot of different people that's going to fill certain pockets or voids that you will need to be filled to get through what you're going through, or you may be that for someone else. And then, and then that's it. You know, and there's also people that I've known my whole life that I could not trust with my children. I would not trust with my wallet, leave my wallet, you know? So, uh, and it's, and it's people that I've known and had a mutual affection towards, you know what I'm saying? So you want to get back to that mutual affection, that, that, that means, that means something, you know what I'm saying? Um, because that forms the basis of friendship. And, and just because you had a mutual affection with someone does not mean that they are a friend Listen, for life. You, you, just, you just took this question, sir, to so many different places. Okay, because you hit Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 no. No need to apologize because I'm just writing stuff down like it's like he, he hit on this and he hit on that. But, but one thing that it wasn't even a question here. And it's kind of out of order, but because you brought it up, I want to go ahead and, and add it in. You hit on a really good point. So you said, you know, if something happens and you're no longer, like, you don't have to be beefing with somebody, basically. Like, if you're not friends anymore, it, it doesn't have to mean that there's a problem, right? That, but, but what I've observed a lot is that when people are no longer friends, it's, it's a problem. It's like, you're either friends or you're enemies. And I don't know why people take that stance, because it doesn't, it, you lose a friend, you don't have to gain an enemy. So I'm glad yeah, sometimes you just grow apart. Okay. But, the, but I, and I just talked to somebody last week that I hadn't talked to for seven months and we picked up right where we left off. Where we we left just don't off. see each other often. We don't talk very often, but I still consider her one of my dearest friends. Okay. So, you know, you don't have to talk every day or see each other all the time, but Wait. she's still, she's still a friend. Good point. Good point. Well, I, I agree with Javi, but um, at the same time, like I said, I'm a little, I'm spiritual. So I believe that people come in your life for a reason, uh, be a season for a lesson or a blessing. So yeah, you're right. There are people who do come in and they, you get what you need. You, you may be the, what they needed in, in that time in their life. And they picked up some gems from you. And then, you know, y'all went y'all separate ways and y'all continue to elevate to a different level. But mm -hmm. that's what was needed at that time. So it's okay. You're right. I, I don't want people to feel like, you know, you got to be beefing or you got to gain an enemy. You just may, may need that person for that season or that time or that moment. That was good. That's right. That was good. Thank y'all for that. The next <laughs> question that I have. Okay. <laughs> so we, we, we've already crossed all the lines. We, we have defined, you know, what an associate is, what a friend is you know, when you can build a friendship. So like, this is your friend, your friends. Okay. Y'all have already established that. The question is, <laughs> is your friend your automatic secret holder or is there a code? And I'm glad that I have a guy on because I want, y'all be able to let you start because I'm curious to know how guys think. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I have friends that um, I consider ride or die that I do think that are, uh, are my, um, my secret bank, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Where I, you know, I can go and deposit uh, my secrets and, and, and they're my bank. Okay. And, uh, and I don't have to worry about it being uh, cashed out to anyone else, you know? Uh, and there's only a few that I have that are like that. <laughs> Someone else, you know? Go ahead with the making deposits. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like it. I too. like that a lot. 
Queen, what you got? I agree, but at the same time, we talked about this. There are friends for different things. So with friends being for different things, you can't deposit all your secrets and your emotions into some of them friends. So like he said, for a few, there may be a few that you do consider ride or die, people who've been there who are rollies who will run through the fire with you, and they're friends you just party with. They're friends you just do certain things with. So those friends you might not deposit them secrets in. Me, I am very to myself. So I, the select few people that I do open up to, I consider, I almost consider their family. I don't consider them friends. And that's hey, kind of how I'm I... Gonna, I'm going to interrupt you just for a second, only because you look hella funny right now. It's like what you're talking and you kind of giving us the freeze frame. So it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like Vogue. <laughs> as, as you're talking. So I didn't know if the screen needed a moment to catch up with your voice or whatever, but you look good now. You look like you're on track. So go ahead and finish your thought. I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh no, that's, I just, there's different people for different, there's different friends for different things. Is this still happening? <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. <laughs> There's different friends for different things. So you don't have to posit secrets or your deepest emotions or be vulnerable with everybody. That's not, that's not for everybody. So for me, I, I have very select few people that I open up with. And at that point, I don't think I consider them friends anymore. I think I consider them almost family. Okay. Okay, that's a good point. Friends, saying what you got um, I definitely don't think that secrets are meant to be shared just because someone is labeled your friend. Um, mm -hmm. And then again, those friends fall in different categories. Um, just for an example, I've been friends with somebody for 20, 25 years, but they have loose lips. So I can't really share everything with her. It doesn't make her less of a friend. She's just not my friend that I tell things to. She's nope. my friend that yeah. I go to for maybe advice or um you know to party with or I mean, just for support and you brought that up because i like to always talk about us being able to accept responsibility for our actions so if you have a friend anybody out there and they know that this is a good friend but she's just mm, she just can't keep stuff to herself if you confide in her and tell her something and she she tells someone or says something by accident she apologizes profusely but is that i mean yes you're going to be upset but is that not your fault because you knew that? Yeah, yeah, definitely it definitely if it fault. has happened several times, if you know that that person just is continuously telling things that you've told her in confidence, yes, that is your fault. If it happens that first time, I don't think that you're, it's the person's fault. But, um, you know, time and time again, you just need to know where to put that. But at the same time, does that make that person a bad friend because she can't hold a secret? I don't think it does. Because you have friends for different reasons. She's mm -hmm. just not your secret confiding friend. You have to remove that part out of your friendship, but you can still be friends. Now, if it was maybe something that was, if she told something that was an ultimate betrayal or something the first time, if it was my first encounter with her, then I probably would not want to continue the friendship. Good point. If it was something, you know, devastating. But um, yeah, I mean, you live and you learn. Uh, it comes with, you know, mature friendships, but I just think that um, I don't write people off because they they wronged me in one area because friendships are so complex and you just got to know where to ca categorize people. I get that some people <laughs> may not know how to do that. Um, they think friends are friends and you treat them all the same, but you can't. But I'm so glad that you said that though. That, and that's part of like, I just want to get all these different perspectives out there because I also feel like, you know, as we're talking, there's probably somebody that's thinking, you know, the opposite. No, if that was my friend and they told or they said X, Y, and Z, oh, I'm done with them. I'm cutting them off. Listen, this is such, in one of the other episodes, um, one of the panels, we live in a cutoff society, but we're not giving people chances sometimes. And I'm not speaking for everybody and I'm not speaking for every situation, but sometimes we're too quick to cut things off. But I, I understand, but again, sometimes that's us accepting some responsibility. Like, like you said earlier, Queen, you can't tell everybody everything. So if you told the wrong person something and they told, I still want to point out that we always have to be willing to accept, you know what, that I messed up right there. I, I messed that up. I'm not going to be mad at them for that because that's, I shouldn't have done that. I, I should have known better than to share X, Y, and Z. So that's the only thing that I want to point out, though, that, that cutoff would be so quick with everything, relationships, friendships. <clears throat> It'd be too soon sometimes. 
Go ahead, Queen. What you? I want to hear what she has to say. Go, huh? I am. This is why I have very few friends. Okay, <laughs> I have that mentality of now. When I say this, don't think cut off as we're just not friends anymore. I remove people out of the position of being a friend, and they get downgraded. Okay. They get demoted. Okay. So if I did make the mistake to tell you something and you opened your mouth about it as a person who considered me friend, as someone who confide, if that person confides in me and I just feel like treat people how you want to be treated and you decided to go and share that, you got to get demoted, my girl, okay? You, you got to come down because I, I want my circle to be solid. And so if I thought you were one of those people I could confide in, um, you know, maybe we didn't have that type of encounter and I did, and you showed me something, then that means you, you're unqualified to be my friend. You go down to an acquaintance, uh, you know, associate, but yeah, I, I, they got to go. <laughs> Oh, I just want to say uh, I, I agree with um, with the ladies, with all of you, uh, but I I do believe in the cutoff. Okay. And, uh, you know, it depends on the, the se severity of what is being said. Right. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know if, if it's the first time, you know, if it's the first time and, and I was confiding someone, um, something um, depends on the severity of what was said, and, you know, and the ramifications of that. Uh, the collateral damage that comes from that. You know, if you say something, you run your mouth to the wrong person, you can, it, it costs friendships, it costs jobs, it, it costs relationships. Oh, uh, you know, everyone does not deserve a chance, even from the first instance. You know, uh, you know, you loan someone some money and they don't pay you back. That could be a cutoff. And severity is different from $5 or $150. Mm. You know what I'm saying? $5, you might let it go. But if you're struggling, five dollars, they cut off. So it all depends <laughs> on the severity of the situation. I like I like you adding that point. And I, I agree. I, I do agree. Cause there are some things that's like one time, one and done, and some stuff is like, ah, okay. So I, I get it. It does matter the degree or the severity or of what it was. So thanks for bringing that up. The next question that I have. Can people in relationships have friends? of the opposite sex. Yes. Something we want you to, I'm gonna let Francine kick this one off. <laughs> um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've had situations where the person I was dating didn't, uh, didn't feel the same way that I did and didn't want me to have any male friends. So I cut my male friend off, friends off. And that was to me i will never ever do that again it was a huge mistake i did a huge disservice to someone a male friend that was genuinely my friend and it took me years to get back to our level of friendship that we had so uh when you're dealing with maybe someone that's insecure um they don't want you to have friends of the opposite sex i think friends of the opposite sex are hugely in are, are of dire importance um, you can bounce things off of the opposite sex, things that you don't understand, things that you want to know, get their insight. Um, I just think I have some guy friends that are just like my girlfriends. That's just, that's just what they are to me. And I, and I value them and I even invite them when I'm just having a girl's night, you know, those particular guys, they're welcome to come uh, because they are my quote unquote girl guy friends that are that, that girlfriends that happen to be guys. Um, so I think I think opposite sex relationships, uh, friendships are very important. Queen, what you got? Uh, having a friend of the opposite sex, especially when you're in a relationship, like that allows um, one. As long as there's communication, if it's communicated, then I don't see why it would be an issue. You know what I'm saying? Your friends, who your friends are, and they were there. Sometimes, a lot of the times before that significant other came around, now if something makes them feel uncomfortable, then that's something that you communicate, you talk about, and you fix at that time. But I, I'm a person, I have a lot of guy friends. I have more guy friends than I have female friends. Mm -hmm. So I, you can't tell me that I can't have male friends. Phew. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Would that be a deal breaker in a relationship for you, Miss Queen, if you had a significant other and he didn't want you to have male friends? Mm. 
Would you continue that relationship? Okay, so today, oh, this day, yes, that's a deal breaker. Oh, okay. okay. I have had a recent, I had a situation recently just about, I have a really good guy friend and the person I was, you know, dealing with at that time, our friendship made him feel uncomfortable. Now, again, I'm a communicative person. So I brought them, I expressed to my guy friend and I expressed to what was my significant other at the time. And I told him that there was, you know, this is the issue at hand. How do we fix this? And we kind of, me and my guy friend kind of just took several seats on each other. And I regret that. Mm -hmm. Like wholeheartedly. He yeah. was a really, really good friend. And now at this point, we are in a process of reading that. So no, I would not cut my guy friends off for a significant other because one, that significant other is does not exist at this point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So someone who would have been here, someone I could confront, someone I could talk to about a lot of things. Somebody I now I call friend. You know, mm -hmm. somebody out of family at this point. So no, that that's definitely a deal breaker. We yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Javi, what you got? I wanna say that um I that you can be friends with someone of the opposite sex. However, there's a caveat. The caveat is you gotta know yourself and you gotta know your significant other. If mm -hmm. you are someone who has a wandering eye. You cannot be friends with someone of the opposite sex. If you have someone that experienced uh, a relationship, had a previous relationship where they were cheated on, uh, they're not going to be cool with you having someone of the opposite sex. And you have to understand that. So everyone's going to bring baggage into the relationship. I'm going to tell you right now, I had a relationship to where I started a relationship when I was in another relationship. And had that one person said that I don't, trust you having female friends guess what there's a reason why because that's how we start you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. uh, you know you just everyone cannot it's not it's not carte blanche it doesn't it's not across the field where everyone can have friends of the opposite sex uh you know it depends on how you are as a person and it depends on how your other, how your significant other is, or, or what happened to you in your past, what happened to them in their past. It's not carte blanche. Um, now I'm gonna tell you right now uh, that uh, I have great friends of the opposite sex, you included. Uh, that you know that my significant other, you know, we everything's great. But I'm gonna tell you right now, back in the day, the old Javi, the bad Javi, um, no, you you would not want me to have a friend of the opposite sex. You know what I'm saying? Even, you know, I mean, you want the male perspective. I'm going to tell you right now, even when I was in a great relationship, you still probably not, would not have wanted me having friends of the opposite sex. And it's not because of them, it was because of me. But that's why your <laughs> point of view is so valued today to me. And even though we're talking about friendships, like you, you touch on and it, and it kind of just um, bleeds over into other things, you know, as far as relationships and other things, because again, I will keep saying it takes a person to be honest with themselves in everything that we do. So, you know, Francine Queen, I agree with you guys. Like I, and I've, and I've done that too. I've been in a relationship where they were not comfortable with having guy friends and I did the same thing and I will never do that again, but I totally agree with you and i don't know if it's because we're we're females and not the females don't cheat because i'm not saying that but what i'm saying is i think that for us we well i'm gonna speak for myself if if i'm in a relationship with someone and if they know me you got to know yourself and know the person that you're dealing with if you know me you know that one it takes two people to cheat so if you're not, if you don't trust me or you have issues with me, then you're going to have issues with me having friends of the opposite sex because you don't know what I'm going to do. But if you know my character and you know that's, you know, she, she's good, I, I trust her or whatever the case may be, then it should be fine. But I think it's not so much the friend, it's the person that you're in the relationship with. So I agree with everybody on the panel today. I think we all made some good points and we give people a lot to think about because there's there's layers just what everything else we talk about there's layers so you know mm -hmm. maybe someone is in a relationship right now and they're going through this where they have had to cut off their male friends or their female friends maybe they can sit down and have a conversation and come to some sort of happy medium um, and address 
the why behind why they don't want them to have friends of the opposite sex. You know, maybe there's a lot of discussions that can be opened up, you know, if people see this, this episode, because it, it's a lot of good talking points for a relationship and people that have friends of the opposite sex. So we're getting the ball rolling here, but we're gonna move on. So the next question that I wanna ask, and we've kind of hit on some, some things already in the discussion, but if you're in a friendship with someone, what might be a cause for it to end or when might it be time to end or call it quits on a friendship? When you mess with my money, <laughs> I mean, I, I loan people, I loan uh, someone I consider a great friend from, um, from, from my high school days, from, you know, from me being a teenager that I knew my whole life, uh, essentially, and I loaned a significant amount of money, um, and I got burnt. And so I'm going to tell you right now, one of the things for me is, yes, it's my mistake that I loaned money because, uh, you, know, you know, I knew it was a possibility that, that uh, I wasn't going to get it back. And they always say, what's that adage, you know, if you loan someone some money, don't expect to get it back. Hell no. I mm -hmm. want it back. I gave you some money. I want it back on the, uh, on the terms that we agreed. <laughs> you know, and when that doesn't happen, then uh then i'll say that could be a great cause for severing ties of the, the friendship okay that's, that's one point of view i i i've been on both sides of that and and i get it and i i think um i don't think i've had any friendships that i've i've severed just because of that but thankfully the ones that have done that have followed on and done something else that have just allowed me to end the relationship anyway so I know you got the money. I see you flaunting money. I see you going out buying things. You know, you may say, I, can I give you $5 a month? No, I don't want the $5 a month. I gave it to you all at once. I want to receive it all at once. So it's it's not just, oh, he, she did not pay me my money. Back. It's even more so that you know you didn't pay me back and you know you had the means to pay it back. It's different when you loan someone some money and they continuously fall upon hard times. And even though you may not be as forgiving, be understanding of the situation. You're living life. You're living life like it's golden, and you don't owe anybody your money. That's I want to say is that what caused someone to sever the relationship. Not just the fact that they didn't pay it back. It's just that even more so is that you know you didn't pay it back, and you're out there gallivanting and enjoying life as if you know you're a superstar. Well, um, I, I know that you, you, you probably won't put yourself in that position again, but if, if the people hadn't realized it yet, I, I just want to put out there that this is, you, you don't want to mess with me, okay? Okay. Don't, okay. Don't, Damn right. But note it. Damn right. Note it. <laughs> the cutoff game was strong down there when it comes to the okay. let you go. <laughs> go ahead, Queen, what you got? Listen, <laughs> you become more of a hassle than a benefit. Mm -hmm. When you're starting to cause me my peace, and I feel like as a friend, this, you know, this is where I go to get some peace or, you know, to feel good or to be, you know, for someone who should be there for me and I'm there for, you're no longer doing that. When you're no, no longer filling the job description, you got to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, I, that's where I feel like I'm at with it because, I mean, I look back and I think of all the friends that are no longer friends. It's you, you, I had to start to keep up with you. I got enough to keep up in my life. I ain't keeping up with you no more. You can go. I heard that. Plain and simple. <laughs> you can go. When you feel like you're in the middle of Real Housewives of Atlanta <laughs> or uh, you know, the uh, Kardashians, and it's time to move on because that's not yeah. where you want to be at. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't don't really, I, I can't say that I severed relationships with people. I just kind of fall back or distance myself, but I still kind of talk to the people. Um, but I've had someone stop being friends with me and I didn't know why. And I asked them why they stopped being friends with me and they couldn't tell me. So that was puzzling to me for quite some time. But then I, I got over it. Like, I don't, I would like to know what I, what I did so that I can apologize or, or not just uh, just say that that's the way I am or whatever, but I have I have no idea what I did to this person And I think that that is extremely unfair. I'm still friends with everybody 
with everybody. <laughs> yeah, I um I I don't have many <laughs> friendships that that have ended. Um, I, I have a few, and you know that them them lines will never be crossed again. We have there's only one situation where I severed ties with a person. Everything else was kind of more like um. Uh, I'm just gonna fall back a little bit. I, I I'm still your friend, but you must not want to be my friend anymore. It's it's more mm -hmm. so like that. So I I've ended in friendships of mine have been ended just because um maybe they didn't want to be friends with me. I wasn't I wasn't their cup of tea anymore. <laughs> right. It's totally fine. So yeah. I wanna I wanna make a point here because I always want to make sure that I tie everything in. And so we're talking about why friendships might end. Friendships don't have to end, but sometimes, no. like Queen had mentioned, she touched on, if something, if you have to put too much effort into it, and, and again, yeah. it doesn't have to be an enemy, but y'all may not be meant to be friends again. If that person is draining you, if you have to prepare yourself to want to hang out with them, that might, you know, be a sign that there's a problem. Y'all might need a break, you know, just cool it off for a little while but there's some maybe some people in your life that you just need to let go like all together and even though i'm saying that i you know only in a few um, instances have i cut off people that is totally necessary sometimes though so i want to make that point too so we're, we're not saying that it, there's not a time and a place there's a time and a place for everything so we may not other than jobby talking about messing with his money you know what i'm saying he cut <laughs> off. but even if it's not something that has to do with money there could be reason if someone is harming you or it's painful to be this person's friend, you are allowed for yourself to cut that off. So I, I just wanted to kind of paint that picture because I feel like we kind of touched on it a little bit, but I want to drive it home because there, is a, there are a lot of people that I hear that are in miserable, and, it, and it's crazy because it's not a relationship. You shouldn't be in miserable, miserable relationships either, but we got people out here that are in miserable friendships. Like, like they're stuck in them and I, and no one should feel like they're stuck in any type of relationship. So I am trying to let you know right now that if it is not bringing, if it is taken away from your peace, your happiness, you might need to let it go. Anybody uh, got something? I have a question. I have a something. So yeah. in my instance where I just don't cut people off, I just allow some distance or whatever. And uh, I hear from everyone else that sometimes it does require a cutoff. Is that like a ghosting situation or is that a conversation that you have with that person? Like, do you say we're no longer going to be friends or do you just fall off and not be friends? For the most part, I just don't believe in the whole ghosting thing. I've done it before, so I'm not saying that I'm, I'm above it, but just in my, where I am now and understanding, I think that everything, I can tell you, like, listen, this, this didn't work. And so I'm gonna go ahead and you know, whatever, or I'm not feeling this, something. But I'm learning that for other people, it is difficult to have those conversations. And, and I, I guess that's why people do ghost them. Yeah. But I'll, I'll let somebody else chime in on that. So I have to play the other side of this because I do cut people off, but I do it. You know, that makes sense. I think I have such a big heart almost to a fault okay. because, like I said, I demote people. And so when I say I cut you off as a friend, that doesn't mean, you know, I've gotten to know you. If I call you a friend, I've gotten to know you and and your demons and the things that you struggle with. And I feel like because I know that some people are in people's life for a reason or a season or a lesson or a blessing, that when I vote you, I don't necessarily just cut you off. Um, because if you were my friend, I was there for you. If you need something you want, you need to call me, you need to talk. I'm not gonna shut that door on you because I, I have friends where that could have been life or death. Mm -hmm. They may not be my friend now, but the that I picked up the phone, it was the difference between life or death. So. No, I don't, I don't want to suffer through it, but I handle what I can handle and then I step back when I need to take a breather. When I say we're not friends and I cut you off, it's I put you in a place where I now monitor the amount of time or amount of access that you have to me, but 
if you call me and you need me, I'm there for you because that is the type of friend that I am. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to change the type of friend that I am because you're not a good friend to me or we're no longer at that place to be considered, you know, friends. I think that um, not everyone deserves a conversation. Okay. And some people deserve to be ghosted. And the reason why is because so for some people out there, they have, uh, they know people that they are friends with that are toxic that are vindictive, uh, okay. that are immature, that are evil, just as much as they know friends that are angelic, good, holy, great person. And okay. depending on who you're dealing with is how you should handle the friendship or severing the relationship accordingly. Because mm -hmm. um, I've known people who become vindictive and evil on a, on a dime when they felt slighted. When you're in a toxic relationship, it, it's... it's you know, sometimes it's great to uh, to serve it completely and get away from it. You never know how people take certain things, how they take the 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 the, the smallest slight. You know what I'm saying? And of course, you people like, well, you should know your friends. You should know the people that you're you're cool with and how they will take things, but you don't all the time. Right. But uh, just to sum it up, is not everyone deserves that conversation when that's okay. when the, when you decided that the relationship is done. Mm -hmm. that's fair that's a that's a good point i mean you you thankfully i i haven't come across people like that and, and this is why different perspectives are good because um in the situations that you just gave you're you're right i mean those people i don't think um they don't warrant a conversation so i, I never ran across that so i wouldn't have i wouldn't have never come to that conclusion but you're right i got one last question guys all right and this hey. one you know what I'm saying? This is this is near and dear to my heart because people be messing this up. If you were, uh -oh. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> like, you were friends, and we're not talking about acquaintances. We're not talking about associates. We're talking about like this was my ace. This is the person that I did everything with. I told everything to. But something happened, and y'all ain't friends no more. What happens to the things inside those friendships when you're no longer friends? I want to know because I, I I know what my answer is, but I don't want to know what y'all think. Are you talking what? about like information that was shared? Yep. Yep. It's away. Uh, out of out of respect for the friendship, it stays. Okay. Out of yeah, respect for the friendship, it stays. I'm gonna say, like I said, I'm a firm believer. Regardless of what you do, you're not about to change me the type of person I am. If I ain't a loose lip person, I'm not about to go out here and be telling your business. That's not my business. It's not my place to open my mouth and tell what you got going on. You confided in me, and I want to believe in being confided in. Then I will maintain being the person that you could confide in. Because again, like I said before, if I if we're no longer friends, but going through something, and you need to call somebody, you know, at the end of the day. Regardless whether we talk, whether we cool, whatever, but you need somebody to talk to, you know, whatever you're talking to me about is safe with me. And I, I'm, and it's not necessarily for that person, but it's because I know that I'm, I'm that good of a friend. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that in you. And that's how it should be. Just because your friend's not anymore, that does not give anybody the right to go run tell that. That's okay. You weren't a good friend to begin with. <laughs> you weren't a friend to begin. Yeah, you were not a friend to begin with. If that's what you're gonna do. And it, they become vindictive. Like if we're not friends anymore, now you decide to go lay all my, you know, my ish bare. Then it's like I'm glad we're not friends no more. Right. And it's interesting because you know this. At least for this panel, this seems to be the general consensus. You know, once but when we were friends, whatever we did and said, you know, because we're not talking anymore, doesn't mean I go tell you know her and him and whatever what happened. That's that's not the case. But the problem is. We feel that way, but there are so many. I was standing in the store. Um, this was before all the quarantine stuff. And I was listening to someone talk about someone that used to be their friend. I'm, I'm sitting and I'm just, <laughs> and I'm just listening. I'm just like, what? what? Wow. This is, this is what people are doing? Telling all the business. No, telling all the business. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I, I knew where I felt and I was, pretty sure that I, I knew where you guys were going to come from just because, you know, I, I, I know you on that level. But um, it, it's crazy because there are people out there that have loose lips like that. And I think that um, 
there's no sense of loyalty any, mm-hmm. anymore, you know, to, to any person. And I think that that's sad because to me, it, it says something about you. If, if any of you confided in me and told me something and we end up not being friends anymore, to me, it doesn't matter what of yours I told. But if I'm telling that to another friend, then hopefully that friend is like, mental note, I know not to tell you none of my business because as soon as you're not, <laughs> you right. can you know, him, her, and her. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. you got to pick up clues. People show you who they are. They show you who they are. And when they do, you got to believe it. You got to okay. believe So um, this was good. This was, this <laughs> but y'all took me places I wasn't really ready for, but I'm glad y'all gave the perspective to the people. You know what I'm saying? Y'all came ready to talk today. I appreciate that. <laughs> so this was our um, episode on friendships. This was a simple dive, even though we got a little deeper than I had anticipated. Um, it was really good. And I hope that you all took something away from it. The takeaways for the show are always the same. We are not always going to agree. We're not. We're not going to have the same point of view. But don't take anything said here personal. There's no reason for it. Yeah. It's not necessary, you know? Here at UE, when you talk, we listen. And that is we try to understand. We try to teach. We try to accept, love, and consider one another. That's what the show is all about. So thank you for joining. Let me know what you want to talk about. Let me know what you want to talk about. Let me know what you want to talk about. Put it in the comments below. This is your show. I'm here for the people. And I will see you on the next episode of the Uneducated Education Talk Show. We have a birthday girl. We got balloons in the background. Okay, okay, hold on, people. Hold on, people. I know, I know I said, I said, I know I had said that I was sleeping. Hmm. And we was out, but we still in, okay? Yes. So, <laughs> down there in the bottom, you know what I'm saying? There's balloons in the background. So, Miss Queen had a birthday yesterday. So, here, you know what I'm saying? Everybody at home, if you don't mind, we're just going to take a second. And we're going to yeah. do it quick. Not the black version. Okay, we're going to do real quick. And we're just going to sing a little happy birthday, okay? Yes. So, ready and... Happy birthday! Everybody look at their glass. Birthday to you. Cheers to you. Hope Ooh. you had a happy birthday yesterday. Before I, I get off, here's something that I think is, is beautiful and it kind of sums up the show. There was a comment posted on one of the previous episodes and um, I, I wanted to talk about it. It, it kind of solidified why I do what I do here. And it's one thing to have an objective or a purpose, if you will. And it's something totally different when it's realized by other people. You know, so I, not that you shouldn't, validation is a whole nother topic. You know, you you shouldn't need it, shouldn't want it, whatever the case may be. But when you get it, it feels good. And I got some validation that people are receiving, you know, the purpose of what I'm trying to do here. So this is only the beginning. Rock with me. Stay on the ride with me because we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere, people. All right. We're here for you. I know that's right. Mm -hmm. I I know that's right. Appreciate you. Doves and hearts. We out. (laughs) Conversations.